It's fun being a Briton. Now here's a neat find. Woodpecker has been at work. When it's your passion, you just love doing it. It's a very easy thing to get involved with. Thanks for joining us for Anoka County today. I'm Martha Weaver and joined by Bob the Birder, Bob Holtz. He's an adult education specialist and naturalist at Wargo Nature Center with the Anoka County Parks and Recreation Department. And we're talking about spring migrants and the birds that have returned to the area now that the snow has gone. And I want to talk to you a little bit about a bird that the species name, I love the name warbler, but don't really know what they are what the names are. Tell me a little bit about what a warbler is and, and what we're listening for. Warblers are in general small birds. Males are very colorful, good singers. They're insect eaters, so they, it's a very positive thing as far as uh, the trees in the forests are concerned. They, they eat huge quantities of insects. How many species are in Minnesota? In Minnesota, our checklist says we are, have 32 species that you can see every year if you go to the right places, <laughs> plus three that have occasionally showed up. So you could find 35 species of warblers, but most people uh, never get all those in one year. Is there oh, a better time than, than others to try and find them? If you want to look for warblers, May is the month. Really? Just that if people want to find warblers, that's what they're looking for. Yeah, the, some people go out and find 20 to 25 warblers in one day. Huh. Yeah, so. The thing is, some of these pass through very quickly. Okay. Let's say the weather has not been good in Iowa. All right. And so they're kind of held up. Then we get a week of nice weather. Some of these just move through. In, in a few days, they're gone because they don't nest here. Not all of them do. Okay. Some do. Um, I think it's 13 species of warblers have nested in the metro area, but only seven of those nest here regularly. So it gives you a clue. You know, the bulk of them do move farther north than... Anoka County. Tell me a little bit more about some of the ones that are uh, more transient. <laughs> some of those that pass through would include a Nashville warbler. Okay. This is a bird that... Uh, How big are we talking about on these? Well, they're five, five and a half inches. Okay. And when we say inches in birds, we're talking tip of bill to the tip of their tail. Okay. See, the Nashville warbler is kind of greenish tinge above, yellow beneath, and has a distinct white eye ring. So it kind of shows them off that way. Okay. They head north to nest in Canada and the northeast quadrant of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, the rest of the time in the summer, you're not going to find them here. Mm -hmm. Another one would be the Tennessee warbler. Again, a greenish tinge above, lighter colored underneath, and a white line over the eye, not oh. a ring around the eye. Uh, these two sound somewhat alike. And by names, Tennessee and Nashville, you would think, ah, they must nest there, but they don't. Oh. They just, they go farther north. Apparently, whoever named them found them in migration time and said, hey, we'll call them Nashville and Tennessee. Sounds good. Another interesting one for me, particularly because of the experience I had, is the black-throated green warbler. Okay, you have to tell uh, us about the experience too, you know. You're right, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. The, um, obviously has the black throat and has a very high-pitched voice. So when I took a class at the University of Minnesota's field biology station one summer, when our instructor said, listen, that's a black-throated green warbler, this fellow said, I don't hear anything. He couldn't hear high pitches. So if you're taking a field course, one of the tests you're going to have at the end is you go outside and the instructor says, see that? That's number one. What is it? A little down the line, there's number so-and-so, but we only hear him. What is that? Huh. When we heard the black-throated green warbler and the instructor said, what's that? He didn't hear a thing. Oh. So he wrote, black-throated green warbler. <laughs> <laughs> he got it right, and several of his classmates got it wrong. Love it. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting experience. They go to Canada and a little bit of a uh, strip of the northern Minnesota. Okay. Black pole warblers... Um, interesting in that they have a white cheek patch in the spring, not in the fall. Warblers do a lot of color changes between spring and fall. Okay. And they have a black cap over that white cheek and a black line beneath that. They uh, don't nest anywhere in the state. They oh. head north to Canada and Alaska. And uh, we're not talking fall, but there's an interesting thing about the fall migration for black uh, pole warblers. They head to the east coast, fatten up a bit, 
and when the wind's right, they head out over the Atlantic Ocean. Do not stop until they get to the Caribbean islands. Really? Because if they do stop, that's the last stop they'll ever make. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing what birds do during migration time. You know? So that's why they also need to fatten up because of the tremendous amount of energy they expend making these trips. How long do, does the migration usually take? Are we talking weeks? Well, in the springtime, as I mentioned with some of the warblers, you know, it's not terribly long in terms of any one particular spot because they're heading rapidly, if the weather is good, to their nesting grounds. Mm -hmm. The fall migration is much more drawn out. Mm -hmm. There's uh, no big rush to have to get to the nesting ground at that time. Okay. How about the ones who do stay, the warblers that do stay in the metro area? One of those very common ones would be a, a yellow warbler. The male is a fairly bright yellow, although the back is a little bit of a greenish tinge in the yellow, and has a red pinstriping, so he's very obvious that he's the male. The female is a duller yellow. Occasionally you can see some striping on them too, and if it is, it's, it's fairly faint. They like to nest in wet areas, mm -hmm. and Willows, shrubs, <clears throat> are, seem to be a favorite of theirs, too. So any place we have marshy wetlands and willow shrubs, we can find yellow warblers. They're very common. Um, there's an American red start, and you'll notice in that name there's no word warbler. Right. We have a number of warblers that do not have the word warbler in their name. Uh, red starts show, uh, the male that is, is pretty much black and then has orange showing on his breast, on his wings, and the outer tail feathers. The outer tail feathers in particular show up as he fans his tail out like that. Okay. Uh, they will nest <clears throat> in fairly large wooded areas, so they're not as common as uh, the yellow warblers, but they can be found in the metro area. Hmm. A similar one would be a bird called the oven bird. Interesting how a bird... <coughs> Doesn't sound good. Gets the name oven bird. Reminds well, me of a nursery rhyme with a <laughs> blackbird in the blackbird pie. No, is he's named because of the she and he and she are named because of the type of nest they build. Huh. It's a domed nest with an entrance from the side. Nice. And it reminded people obviously of an old clay oven mm -hmm. that people used to use. So he's the oven bird. Huh. His song is the books say it's teacher, 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 but it's really chirti, chirti, chirti. The emphasis is on that uh, T syllable. The uh, breast on the oven birds is fairly light colored with a series of dark spots that run in uh, parallel lines. Mm -hmm. um, they are almost ventriloquists, it seems like, when you try to find them. You hear them sing, and they don't seem to be easy to find, but they're easy to hear. Mm. So, and so they can be found in the metro area, too. And then we have one called the common yellow throat. Um, I always like that one because the male has a black mask that he wears. And I used to tell children and when I go to schools and give talks, this is the Lone Ranger Warbler. If I say that today, the teachers get a big smile on their face and the kids just are blank. Because they don't know who the Lone Ranger is. They have no clue who the Lone <laughs> Ranger is, right? So I can't use that one anymore for, for children. Um, they like marshes, wetlands to nest in and particularly if there's cattails. Mm -hmm. So you can find all of those here. The more, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, you say metro, but how urban of an area do these birds actually decide to nest in? I mean, this is considered the metro, but this is definitely not urban. Right, in urban areas, you can find the yellow warblers and the common yellow throats fairly easily if you have some wetlands. Okay. I mean, like I live, in Roseville, in a townhouse, and I can go to a marsh that's a few blocks away and I can find both of those species rather easily. Okay. The red starts and the oven birds can be found in the metro area, but not so much urban areas unless you've got a good sized wooded area. They're not going to be in your backyard. Okay. You know. so. Excellent. Wonderful. And we have a lot to look forward to because there are more that are coming every day. Right now, the, the migrants are moving in, and when May rolls around, that's when people will really be out looking for them. Uh, it, it gets exciting. They're not easy. It's not the kind of bird you'd want to take somebody out for their first experience. Okay. Because they're small, 
they're very active, so they're hard to get a look at many times because they don't sit in one spot. And if you're just learning to use your binoculars, it is very difficult. And they tend to be high up in trees a lot. People talk about having getting warbler neck oh. from spending too much time looking up in May, you know. And, and actually, people do get sore necks from doing that. You know. It's a not a good position for your neck to be tilted back that way. All right. But it's exciting to see the little bright colors. Fantastic. We'll look forward to seeing them. Very good. Appreciate it. Bob Holtz, our adult education specialist and naturalist, ornithologist, Bob the birder, here at Anoka County Park.